Hello friends, welcome to Science Land. I am Nikita and today we are going to talk about production of edible wax seeds. Before starting the video, I request you to subscribe to my channel. It really means a lot to me and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you so much. Let's start. Edible vaccine can be produced by incorporation of a transgene in a selected plant cell. Transgene is your antigenic sequence from a virus or epitope sequence from any pathogen. You are introducing it in a plant cell. Now, this entire process is known as transformation and it leads to a transgenic plant. If you want, you can see my first part of edible vaccine, you'll understand better. Incorporation of transgene can be done by two main methods without combining with a vector by direct gene delivery method or by combining with a vector by indirect gene delivery method. So there are two methods, direct and indirect. One uses vector, other doesn't. But what is a vector? Vector is like a vehicle for your antigenic sequence. Antigenic sequence from a pathogen will sit in this vehicle and it will be reaching the plant. Vector is vehicle. Now, if it is an indirect method, there are two subtypes wherein you use a plant bacteria or you use a plant virus. I'll give you the explanation of all three methods. Okay, so now let's talk about the direct gene delivery method. Direct gene delivery method is a simple vector independent method. It leads to stable transformation of the plants. Okay, what happens basically in this method is the RNA or the DNA which is the epitope sequence, is directly incorporated into the plant cell. The most commonly used method for doing this is ballistic method. And this ballistic method also has another name which is gene gun method or microprojectile bombardment method. What happens is basically there is a gene gun. You take your DNA or RNA and you put it in a gold or a tungsten micro carrier. You coat the DNA with that particular gold or tungsten and you keep it in the gene gun such that under the pressure of helium gas, high pressure, the entire micro carrier with the DNA or RNA gets incorporated right into the plant cell. So this is the basic, you know, explanation of what is ballistic method. There is no vector which is used, no vehicle. Directly you are using the pressure of the helium gas and you are incorporating it into the plant cell. The method becomes a little bit expensive. Now there is one more thing you need to remember about direct gene delivery method which is the ballistic method is you know differentiated on the basis of where the antigen gene is expressed. Is it expressed in the nucleus or is it expressed in the chloroplast? So there are two main types of ballistic method. The first one is the chloroplast transformation where your antigen gene is directly introduced in the chloroplast such that it increases the protein. Okay. And the second is the nuclear transformation. The antigen gene is directly incorporated into the nucleus of the plant cell and with the help of non-homologous recombination the transformation will take place. So these two types are basically known as antigen expression method. Where is the antigen gene expressing itself? Either it is chloroplast or the nucleus. The most commonly used is the chloroplast transformation. Now, we have certain examples of the vaccines which are produced by this method. Cholera, tetanus, rotavirus, Lyme's disease, plaque, all these vaccines and there might be some more. They are produced by direct gene delivery method. So, this is the explanation of direct gene delivery method. Okay, so now we will study the indirect gene delivery method. Indirect gene delivery method is a vector mediated or vector dependent method 
what happens basically is the desired plant cells are infected with either a plant bacteria or a plant virus to produce the protein of interest. What happens in this method basically, the antigenic sequence is first incorporated into the plant virus or the plant bacteria which acts as a vector. This vector will be used to infect plants. So here there is the vector or the vehicle involved between the antigenic sequence and the plant. Now depending on the vectors, the indirect gene delivery method is divided into two. The first one is agrobacterium mediated gene transfer which uses a plant bacteria. And the second is the genetically engineered plant virus which uses the plant virus. Now this method is also known as transformation of the chimeric gene through viral infection. Both of these methods we will be studying now. Okay, so now we will be discussing the first type of the indirect gene delivery method which is the agrobacterium mediated gene transfer. Now agrobacterium, it's a plant bacteria which is a gram negative bacteria. It infects the plant cell such that it transfers the gene to the plant nucleus. There are two common species of agrobacterium which are used. First is agrobacterium tumefaciens. Second is agrobacterium rhizogenes. Now, agrobacterium tumefaciens has a plasmid which is known as Ti plasmid. T as in tumor, I as in inducing, tumor inducing plasmid. Agrobacterium rhizogenes has a plasmid which is known as Ri plasmid, root inducing plasmid. For example, if it is a agrobacterium tumefaciens and the plasmid is Ti plasmid, the genes which are coded for auxins and cytokinins are removed and the antigen gene is incorporated and that's how Ti plasmid is used for vaccine production. Now, this method is used to yield stable integration of the gene into the plant genome. Because it is directly incorporating the antigen gene into the plant genome, it is known as the stable transformation. And the transient transformation is a little bit different. Now, this agrobacterium mediated gene transfer is a slow process and the yield is low, but it is a simple and cost effective method. It's not as expensive as the direct gene method which uses the gene gun. Now, certain vaccines are produced by this method. Example, diarrhea, tuberculosis, dengue, Ebola, etc. So, this is the meaning of agrobacterium mediated gene transfer. Okay, so now let's study what's the second method of the indirect gene delivery method. Using a genetically engineered plant virus, the tomato mosaic virus, alfalfa mosaic virus, etc. are generally used as vectors. The method involves modification of a plant virus to make a viral coat protein chimeric gene. Now, what does that mean? I have my antigen gene, I have the viral coat protein gene. A virus has the coat proteins and that coat protein gene I will take, combine it with antigen gene and I will again insert it in a virus. This particular combination of two genes is known as viral coat chimeric gene. This virus will further infect the plant. Now, as the viral genome will replicate, the antigen gene will also replicate. So, the accumulation of my antigen will be there in the plant cell. Okay? In plants, this technique leads to transient antigen expression, something which is superficial. It's not integrated into the genome because the virus is only infecting the plant. The benefits are large degree of recombinant protein expression shortly after disease. Because it's a viral infection, the expression of the gene protein will be to a very high extent. Further, purification of the product is a must. Because it's a viral product, you need to purify it before even using it for vaccination. And last is the disadvantage which is it leads to plant death. So as soon as the plant is infected with the virus, it will produce the product for you, but it will eventually die. You have to reinfect another plant 
and then that plant will die. So reinfection is needed which correlates to the amount of vaccine product you need. That is the disadvantage. So this is the indirect gene method by a plant virus. Okay, so irrespective of what kind of method a scientist is using, be it direct method, indirect method, there is one thing which is must, which is evaluation of the protein and animal models. Each antigen produced in a plant must be verified by animal studies and western blot. This is mandatory because we don't know what kind of uh, properties that particular antigen has and obviously this is used for vaccination. So before giving to humans, the animal studies is a must. It must also be quantified by ELISA. Okay, so now we'll talk about the major plant species which are used to make edible vaccines. There are many out there, but I've just noted a few. Each plant species has advantage and disadvantage. There is no uh, a particular plant which will only give you advantage. That's why the you know research is in progress for edible vaccines. The first one is rice. Now rice is commonly used in baby food. So that is an advantage. Rice usually shows high expression of antigen. These are the advantage but rice grows slowly and it requires the glass house conditions second potato there is no need of refrigeration to store the potato right but if you cook the potato it leads to denaturation of the antigen banana it is commonly used it doesn't require cooking it is inexpensive but to produce a banana plant and to get the fruit, it requires two to three years because that is the maturity period of a banana plant. Also, it spoils very fast. Moving on, tomato. It spoils very fast. It has high content of vitamin A, which may boost the immune response. So, these are the few plant species which I have written. There are many actually. There is uh, tobacco, lettuce, alfalfa, carrots many are there so that's it for today's video thank you so much for watching bye bye